was your wood, as we gathered to remember Kate, a dearly loved family member and a dear friend to so many. Donations in remembrance of Kate can be made as you leave the church and back or the schoolroom door and the money that you give will be for Dementia UK charity. Re refreshments will be served in the schoolroom following this service, uh, to which you are all very welcome. I would like to thank on behalf of everyone uh, the work that Steve Jakeman, our present minister, has done for his help in making this service as accessible to as many people as possible. We're very grateful to him. I would now like to welcome Susan uh, Greenheart, Reverend Susan Greenheart, who was a minister here for many years and has been invited to lead us in this Thanksgiving service this morning. Welcome Susan. So welcome to you all on this very special day as we come to remember Keith and the part he played in the lives of all of us gathered here today. Keith was so much a part of this community, this village, and so it's only fitting that we meet as family and friends to remember, to celebrate this love, and to give thanks for this gentle gentleman who shared his life with good humour, kindness and understanding. So let us offer up this occasion to God's blessing and to God's love. Let us pray. Loving God, we come before you now to give thanks for Keith's life. We come with a mixture of emotions because wherever and whenever we know love, we experience both joys and sorrows. Your presence, Lord, has the power to heal, to revive. You give us courage, you give us hope, you give us peace. You fill us with wonder, you turn our mourning into dancing. So now as we share memories of Keith and join together in celebration of his life, Remind us that love is stronger than death. Fill our hearts with love and laughter. Give us the peace of knowing your resurrection promise that love never ends. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to sing Come and Join the Celebration. <laughs> Thank you. 
Psalm written over 3,000 years ago. Imagine how many people these words have brought comfort to in the years since. The Lord is my shepherd. I have everything I need. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the valley of death, I will not be afraid. For you are close beside me, your rod and your staff protect and conquer me. <coughs> you prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies. You welcome me as a guest, anointing my head with oil. My cup overflows with blessings. Surely, your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Thanks, Lord. Um, I always think of that as a homecoming psalm, wherever we are, um, coming home to God. God being with us. That beautiful psalm is a reminder that throughout our lives, God's presence is with us. God gives us a place to rest when we are weary. God steers us back on the right path when we're wanting to do things our own way. And sometimes when life is so bleak we cannot see the way ahead, God shines a light in the darkness, giving us courage to take one more step. One more step, one more step. And there is something more. God always wants to bless our lives. Sometimes we can't always make sense of our lives. We can even wonder where God is and if he's there at all. But if we 
think of that psalm of God anointing our heads with oil, blessing us, we are so special to God. If we think of that, that God is anointing our heads with oil, and we look back on our own lives, we can see how God has been with us and is with us every step of the way. We meet God day by day in the love of those with whom we share our lives, those we encounter in the work we do, the experiences we have, and in the lives we share. God wants to and does bless our lives. God blessed Keith's life with vision. It was Keith, we can't see it as much because of the screen in front of us, but it was Keith who made this wonderful cross in chapel that helped everyone know that here Christ is at the centre of our lives. He blessed Keith with laughter, love, and humility, with practical skills, with a community spirit. And the photos that you're about to see tell so much about who Keith was. Keith was a blessing to us all in so many ways. So I invite Scott to come and share memories of his dad, the gentle gentleman. Stole some of my lines there, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, first and foremost, thank you very much for being to come today. You know, Dad would have been very humble to have seen the number of friends and family that have come to say, you know, just pay the respect to Dad. So I don't want this to be a sad speech. This is a celebration of Dad's life. So fingers crossed, the more laughs and tears. I want to take you through a snapshot journey. And give you a few stories and thoughts along the way. As Susan said, the photos on the screen, which hopefully you can see in the schoolroom as well, offer insight as to the sort of person he was. So, where did it begin? Keith Frederick Smith, born in 1938, on the dark side, the wrong side of the tracks, <laughs> otherwise, otherwise known as Lancashire, <laughs> more specifically Birmingham. The Smith family, with two X's, as Dad used to say. So Arthur and Ellen, his mum and dad, dad and his brother Roy, and they lived in a terrace house opposite the Turf Moor football stadium, hence the scar. Dad went to grammar school, where his favourite subject was maths, but he also loved playing cricket, running cross country, numerous other sports, but I mentioned both cricket and cross country again. From school, he was an apprentice electrical engineer in Burnley, before he did, he was then drafted into National Service between 1958 and 1960, which, according to Mum and others, it said it was the last year of intake. So whether he was today, uh, glad or not, I'm not quite sure. He was actually stationed in Germany for the best part of those two years, and he always used to say that the only words he learned in German were two that I can't really say in church. <laughs> he wasn't a big swearer, but when he did, he was usually funny. There are some great photos of him and his time in the army that should come up on the screen. So during the discharge from the army, the doctor told him he shouldn't have even been allowed in the army due to his flat feet. But that didn't stop him running for the army across country, which he did well at. I can now see where I got my running gear from. Having done his duty for Queen and Country, he then got a job as an electrical engineer in Colmar. He carried on playing cricket, which he'd done before he went to national service, and this is where his life's famous fame came about. So what he always used to tell people was, you know what I've done? I've called him the cricket captain out. But what he always used to speak about was the fact that it was actually the female captain who had Rachel Hayden. <laughs> and then it all happened, so please picture the scene. It was 1961. And the location was Blackpool Beach. A typical love story scenario. An incredibly shy, damsel in distress. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm 
going to go into that in a minute. <laughs> but she's sleeping down some stairs. The damsel was, of course, mum, and yes, apparently she was incredibly shy. I know you find that all, all hard to play in hell. And the night in shining armor was, of course, dad. Although, I should point out that he was actually seen laughing at mum from the top of the steps to start. <laughs> so he had a sneaky laughter in him. And that, all, that always set us off laughing around the dinner table and doing signs. A little bit of dad chasing mum went on before they became an item. Three years later, in 1964, they were married. They were moved to Cheadle, <coughs> Winton Aston, before they eventually landed in Clifford via Nairsborough and a static car on for three months, but the less said about that, the better. <laughs> it was 1972 when they came to Clifford. And Ian, Simon, and Claire were already in turn. So the Smith family had just tipped into 50 years in this village. And if Dad was around today, he would still claim, as he always did, that he was on a mission here to convert a and push Yorkshire folk. Dad carried on with electrical engineering and then started his first business in the early 80s, making paper disposables. But to you and me, toilet rolls. <laughs> Dad's work ethic was second to none, and I'm sure I know that many, I don't know many others who have worked as hard to do what he did and achieve what he did. He eventually sold his last business in the early 2000s, but even after this, he was still in semi retirement, doing some consultancy work for various people. He really did just love to work and grab, whether that be paid work, house renovations, DIY projects. That was my wife's <laughs> place, right across the street. As you can imagine, even though the 1980s were a start of great business ventures for Dad, it was also a terrible decade for the family with the loss of the inside. <coughs> Dad was strong throughout that time for Mum, Claire, myself, and I'm sure I speak for them all when I say that our friends helped us out through the dark times. But just touching on that for a little minute, I, just, I thought about an incident that happened, which I thought just typified Dad. He was a hard nosed and a fair businessman, straight talking Lancastrian. Underneath that exterior, exterior was a soft centre. So in the, in the early 2000s, I was writing my university dissertation, spending my days down at the office, you know, down in Sherbourne where that worked, trying to make sure I got a piece of my boy. So I come home a little bit earlier than that, and then an hour or two later, Dad came in. Anyway, he's walked into the walked into the kitchen and just burst out in tears when he saw me. And obviously, me and Mum, we said, you know, what's wrong? And it turned out we were in a car accident on the road back. This was where Simon, close to where Simon and Ellie's accident, and the car was the same colour as mine. So he just thought the worst, and it just showed, you know, he definitely had a soft sense of running through. And he was such a giving person. His various extracurricular activities included being a member of this church for 47 years, doing the accounts, legal charity work. Treasurer, steward, or job man, leading the shell club in a table tennis club next door, being a team manager for Yorkshire Badminton. He was in the Masons for 20 plus years, and then obviously ferrying taking us to various places throughout the UK. I guess he's maybe best remembered in the village, along with Bum, for running clubs for 17 years. Fair to say that those Christmas con concerts were still for legends. <laughs> I think Dad used to find it funny getting all dressed up in some sort of silly costume. Although I come to think of it, he dressed up the same as us, so I'm not quite sure. <laughs> For those that don't know, you've got to imagine fairies with two tubes, full brownie uniforms, all sorts of different things. But I think that was all far away from Dad by the smile they got on people's, people's faces in the crowds. Outside of helping others, he just loves spending time with the family. Whether that be in various caravans, motorhomes that the Smith family had over the years, or taking the family on holidays abroad. He loves sport in general, either watching or playing, as I mentioned, on a weekend, or in fact any time. You can often find him on the sort of side of a sports pitch or pool, watching one of us play cricket or football, dive, swim, or run. But by far his favourite pastime was his thinking or reading time, as we like to call it. <laughs> in what he used to call the throne or the library. <laughs> I won't I won't stand, I'm sure you can all get the picture. But we reckon he used to enjoy that as much as anything else. 
So when I sat down with the woman over there the other day, going through a few dates and bits and pieces, I was asking them what else could describe, describe that diameter. So I've already mentioned a few of those things, but the general themes or words that came up were constant support to family and friends. Not only us, but we've got the best friends, the gentlemen, generous, the big softy, not one for idle chit chat, and only spoke up when he had something to say. Much to community frustration in one. <laughs> and a great sense of humor. Now, even during those final, final months when he was quite poorly, you can still see that glint in his eye and that cheeky northern Lancastrian in him. And I was thinking and pulling things over, and I recall the times that occasionally people say to me, Oh, you sound just like your dad there, or you just like that when you do that. When you do that. And do you know what? That'll do me. So that's a good compliment. So I'd just like to finish with a poem that I reckon sits him down to the ground. A dad's man is called. A quiet man, a family man, a proud to be a proud man, a warm man, an organised man, a man who had a proud man, a fair man, and I'll be there, man. I'll help you if I can, man. A thinking man, a light drinking man. I have responsibilities, man. A husband man. Love my family, man. I'll be there when it matters, man. A Burnley man, a Lancastrian man, with a strong world and answer, man. A football fan, a real cricket fan. A decent spinner in his time, man. A gentleman, a driving man. Keep going till we're there, man. A homely man, a loving man, and now in our hearts and minds.
open us to receive the blessings you are so ready to pour out upon us. We pray for this family, these friends, this village, and this church community. May your love for us inspire us with kindness, humility, understanding, and mercy that your kingdom may come. Amen. Will you join me in the Lord's prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So we're going to close our time together with a family favourite who is still the presence of the Lord, which we often sing at the beginning of the service, but is such a, 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 a wonderful hymn about healing, about God's presence, and his, his presence in our lives wherever we go. <laughs>